That's a strange rule <laughs> or interpretation. Further, we did have four board members waiting to come to the meeting. Oh. But because of the missing so I don't mention. Yeah. Oh my goodness. We are very close. <coughs> okay. Well, thank you for that clarification. in helping to resolve conflict. Um, I was one of the very few people who I believe attended the legislative hearing on the PLDC. The hearing that I went to, from what I hear, was pretty much the only public hearing that happened at that in that round. And I was one of three people in the room. Um, I didn't testify because, to be quite honest, I only heard about the PLDC on my way over there. And the hearing was over before I could actually read through the entire law and understand it, what was the measure that was being passed. So I think what I'm saying here is that my understanding of the situation, based on my personal experience with this, and also with talking to many people and hearing what's going on today and elsewhere, is that people are feeling very strongly that they have not had um, an ability to give mana'o on this process, not in the beginning, not in the creation of the process, not in the creation of the rules, and I think that some are definitely feeling um, concern that they are not having their mana'o heard right now. Um, I am very concerned, as a peacemaker, that if these administrative rules are passed as is, that the people will genuinely have no choice but to fight. I would prefer not to see that. I understand that there are some good intentions. While I don't agree with the way that they are put forth myself, I do understand that people are looking for solutions. They're looking for ways to repair stuff that's broken. They're looking for ways to um, to figure out answers to problems. That is valid, but an answer that creates potential damage is certainly going to cause great, great conflict if the people are not listened to along the way. And right now what I'm hearing is that the people are not satisfied with the administrative rules that are put before you. I know that repeal of the PLVC is a legislative act and you know that you folks don't necessarily have direct control over that. But there is much that you have control over. There is much that the people have said. And in the interest of peace, there is a way that you can put the brakes on your own organization, on this corporation, put the brakes on, because that is what you have the power to do, to put the structures in place that will prevent damage from happening. Now, in the future, that's the way that we all need to work with each other. So, mm -hmm. mahalo very much. Anybody else would like to testify? 
supposed to be put in trust. It's like a no-no with a lot of our people. So, got to take into consideration, you got the best person right here on, on, on the board. You know, he knows everything that has to be done. And yet, we know that there's a shortfall in the budget. We know that there's a need. When you put up there about state parks, I mean, you know, come from Kahana State Park, we have to fight 30 something years just to be able to live in the park. But our bathrooms are not all dilapidated like that because we have a lot of groups coming in. I mean, there's some really, you know, bad places. So I see Malai Kahana on the screen. And um, our Ko'ala Aloha Wayne Civic Club, which, you know, uh, I'm a part of, we basically came forward to see if we could get the lease for that place, you know, and, and have our members run uh, run that, uh, that park up there. But many of our members are really older. We were even underneath the cabinets over there trying to, you know, fix up the, the, the sewage line and everything to make it work out there, you know. And um, we do all our own cleaning and what that. It came to a point that we said, this is too much for us to handle. And so it went into, um, you know, hands of people uh, from Laie. <laughs> I think that, you know, if, if I really wanted to look at this, this, um, at this bill, if I really wanted to look at this act, I would really, uh, would really think, gee, this probably would, would do good for some, a place like us in Kahana, where we really need a recreational center with a certified kitchen, would really, really help us in Kahana. Because we're not on commercial land, we're on conservation land. So this kind of would bypass everything so that we could get a recreational center with, with a, you know, with a certified kitchen. And it could do, do good for areas that maybe some of our senators have been trying to move because they've been, they're not able to get some of those areas um, in their district or mobus that they represent, get some of those uh, projects completed. But I, I, I think that the bottom line to all of this is that they got to listen to the concerns of our people. Every one of us that pay taxes and live in the state of Hawaii has a concern. Whether it's where we live, in our community, outside of our community, in the state. Our issues need to be heard. I'll sum up with, ju I'll sum up with just this. When you did your new administrative rules, did you really take into concern all those people that came forward that provided testimony for you, even in your rule in, in, in some of the administrative rule changes? And if you have not, with the new rules that have come up, and those that had the opportunity to come today, please take that into consideration because it's not going to move any further than this legislative body. Because I believe that this legislative body there's many of them that have approved this act that are running pretty iffy right now. That I think that thing will be hooli. It'll it'll turn this legislative session. So if you've done all you can to make sure that your rules and everything is in order, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. But if you have not, I think that this will be the legislative body that will overturn it. They need two thirds, and I think that they will do it. Thank you very much.
culture and I learned about what he, what, he, what he come from and what he's going through. And I was like, I realized, oh, like, my brothers and sisters over here, they, they still, they still got something. Cause like, there is no uh, treaty of annexation, like what Anthony was saying earlier. And, and whenever things like this pop up where the, they want to do things, you know, for the state, I, I always have a problem with it because it's technically not a state. Like, everyone knows the past and, and what happened. They came here with guns. And they pointed them at an unarmed woman in a palace with total disregard. They threatened to level Honolulu. And that was pretty recent, I feel. You know, 1893 is pretty recent. And here we are, like 119 years later, and we're just like making all these decisions. Like, what, what caused this to be here was Pono. And so um, I would like to, you know, ask you guys to you know, consider that because you don't have 67 state parks and 20 gold harbors. You stole that. That doesn't belong to you. When I say you, I mean like the state of Hawaii. I just, that's always been my big problem. That's why when I joined the Occupy movement, you know, I put it out there to be de-occupied on a little bit because these, my friends are, are in a, it's a nation in distress, and I can't, I can't sleep at night. I think that's why Americans have insomnia, and you could take <laughs> have restless legs and you, know, you can't have that kind of head around you and over you and every just continue to live life normally. You know, what's done in the dark comes to the light. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Christopher Kitty of Iowa Kelly, Ken Merlin. And um, this seems to be geared towards the PLDC, but if we look at the LUC and we look at the LNR, the LNR like shuffled off um, part of its responsibilities to the LUC. And the LUC's primary purpose is to carry out Act 27 and Act 100, which is to maintain the agricultural lands that are here. And the PLDC seems to go totally against that. And I don't know. I had one of my I had one of my mom's friends like ask me and said, Well, isn't it good there might be a McDonald's like at the at the at the school that my kids go to? Bottom line though is it's like everything is that <clears throat> everything that anybody can do is being put off on to nobody so that somebody might not do it. And this can't continue. Very clear what GLNR's jurisdiction and what they're supposed to do is. It's very clear what the LUC is supposed to do and what they're not doing. And it's very clear, to me anyway, what the PLDC aims to do. And it does not line up with what the state plan is, which is what governs these different elements. It's not in line with what the city plan is, which also governs these elements. And I don't see how anybody in good conscience can like, feel good about four people running an agency that looks to develop public lands and potentially impede upon private lands. It's too loosely worded. The 
these rule changes are so mundane. It's like, you know, it's like, gosh, all of it. Let's go over to Kovalave. Oh, well, we can't go here because there's an unexploded ordinance over here. But you guys can have Kovalave back. But you can't go over here. So is, I mean, is a PLDC just another another way to get the DLNR and to get the LUC out of doing what their jurisdiction allows them to do and what they're supposed to be doing for the constituents of the city and for just the citizens of Hawaii. You know, never mind the citizens of America. America's like 2,500 miles away from me. But really, I beg your pardon? Can you please let me summarize? Summary? <coughs> there is no jurisdiction for the PLDC according to um, jurisdictional lines that have already been laid in the sand. Um, Act 27, Act 100. Um, it clearly defines what the rules are. PLDC does not fit into that. Why we're having this meeting and discussing the same stuff that we've been discussing for the last 20 or 100 years is clearly not getting through to the lawmakers that are creating the dreams. <laughs>
Today we are looking at it because today we recognize the consequences of what could come. We also, rec I also recognize the value of the intent of Act 55 to try and bring revenue. You know, it's purported you know, to look for monies to help our schools, to help our parks, to help our communities. But personally, as I try to keep up with all of the information that's coming out with Act 55, I see that it's more of a government partnership with private corporation benefit at the taxpayer's expense. And I say this because who has the money to develop? <laughs> Is it our local organizations? Is it our nonprofits that are actually servicing the people out of the goodness of their heart? Because you know, when you're nonprofit, when you're servicing your communities, when you're active in your civic clubs, in your homestead associations, in your community associations, that's out of love. Love and service. Like Auntie Ululani has said, out of service to your community, to your fellow human. But acts such as these <clears throat> open the doorway for commercialization to monopolize our land, to capitalize upon our tax dollars, to further, further subjugate the locals of this island, of the Kopu and without the Kopu, because we're all locals. Whether you come in and adopted our ways, the way that we love each other, we love our Aina, we want to protect and take care of it. That's what we're talking about, our local, our Aina, which we have a, a bond to, that Native peoples have a bond to, their Aina. Coming from Waianae, I see our beautiful Waianae Valley. We have organizations, Ta'ala Cultural Learning Center, commonly known as Ta'ala Farm. This land, Hawaiian homeland, DLNR land, Department of Ag land, the state is in a partnership with a corporation that has the monies to build and develop, to come into my valley, <coughs> onto my aina, to my moku, and build up something that we don't want. I've seen the flow chart. I've seen a little bit of your of the Waimanalo meeting, which I appreciate. Senator Paul High Ryan for providing for us. But that flow chart to me, even as I saw it, you know, there's little pieces of community input. But the community input that's going to be disregarded, just like the input, the recommendation to the administrative rules that has been disregarded. I think those input, especially from larger organizations, more of the well-known organizations like the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, like Blue Planet, like the Sierra Club, even from the proponents, that those suggestions be put out and there be rationale as to why it's not implemented, why it doesn't work for PLCC. Because our concern is that with the exemptions, the waivers, the broad strokes of a pen, that five of you have the power to do that broad stroke of the pen is going to affect all of us. The fact that we only have one hearing on one island in one small room speaks for itself. That, to me, that totally demonstrates what PLDC is going to do. They're going to do whatever the heck they feel like doing, regardless of the community input, regardless of the justified rationale as to why things should either pull back 
reconsider, or completely change. Now, when we're not paying attention to those knowledgeable people, which there have been many that want to work with you, when we're not paying attention and considering, including and implementing their monopoly, their strong suggestions, we're also opening the floodgates for litigation. So not only do we open the floodgates for litigation, we open the floodgates for discontented citizens of this fake state. So this should not be the one and only theory. That in itself is a total travesty. So I, I ask you to reconsider and go to the neighbor items. I think that much of the initial objectivity that you folks witnessed, I think maybe some of that has calmed down. Maybe we become more informed about what you have and still need to do. And perhaps we can present ourselves in a way to which is more acceptable to you. But oftentimes, the things that we are left with leaves us with the behavior that you see. So I ask you again, especially for our neighbor islanders, to please go back and take a look at it. Please reconsider all of the manao of our more known and knowledgeable people. And um, this is a fake state. All of what they call ceded land is these land. We do not have no true documentation of actual statehood of a treaty. So that is still a separate battle, but it's one that's always going to come up because it's still there. The apology bill acknowledges that. We have unresolved claims. <coughs> so bear in mind that things that are done today, when the time comes, will be moved because all that has been done since the time is illegal. Mahalo <laughs> noon. Anyone else? Good afternoon, Mr. Howard, which is Chair. I'm David Alarcon on behalf of the Land Use Research Foundation. First of all, thank you very much for the opportunity to comment on the proposed rules and strategic plan and uh, flow chart. Uh, we would like to commend PLDC for providing the website and uh, frequently asked questions and other information on the website for people to, um, to view. And for having, I believe I counted six to eight public hearings on the rules. And this is either the seventh or eighth public hearing, including the one on the River Islands, um, I believe. Uh, on not public hearings, it includes the board hearings, includes the introduction of the board. So including board hearings and these public hearings, I believe it's between six and eight hearings where the community had the opportunity to comment, so I commend you on that. Um, we would note, however, by the testimony here and, and otherwise, that there are very many concerns that the public has, and, and we would respectfully uh, recommend that PLDC um, you know, seek to provide yet even more public information and um, not only to the public, but to the new council members. We would note that the council resolutions were passed by council members who will no longer be in office on, many of whom will no longer be in office on January 1st. Uh, perhaps go back to the counties and, and explain, uh, you know, the purpose and, and the objectives of PLDC, and also have uh, information on your website and available to the public to answer the many questions that were raised here, good questions that were raised here by the public. Um, we reviewed the rules, and uh, as you folks know, we have experience in, with government rules, and we would say that these rules, strategic planning, and the flowchart is not a mess. And in fact, um, right now, various different state agencies have the powers to lease or otherwise uh, allow for the use of lands, and PLDC is a way to have one agency, one agency in charge of the use of state lands, which is right now under the jurisdiction of several different agencies with several different processes. 
So it brings it all home to one agency. And we would also note that this process and the PLBC is consistent and similar with how other states handle the use of public lands. Um, we hope that um, we hope that the public will have ample opportunity to come in and participate uh, in the board hearing. And, and it wasn't raised; it might have been raised earlier, but everyone is going to have the opportunity to testify at the PLDC board hearing, where all the board members could be present, and these rules are brought before you. So everybody will have yet another opportunity to comment in front of the full board. Um, in fact, these rules are more stringent than the land use process of many other agencies, including DLNR's lease process and DLNR's conservation district use application process, more stringent than the LUC boundary amendment process, more stringent than the HCDA or Hawaii Community Development Authority HCDA approvals. This is based on uh, what's in your strategic plan and that flowchart, just looking at all the all the, uh, I guess, process in the flowchart. Also more stringent than the Hawaii Housing Finance and Development <coughs> Corporation, their 201H affordable housing approvals, which uh, in this past year has uh, agreements for over 3,000 affordable housing units. And your folks' procedures are more stringent than what they do, um, based on your strategic plan and that flowchart and also more stringent than the Department of Foreign Homelands project approvals, and there are other agencies that have similar exemptions. Um, we just have a few comments on the strategic plan and flowchart. We support the listing of the various laws which are applicable, for, applicable to the PLDC, and I think by listing these laws, it would give comfort to the people who are concerned about the process. Listing that the PLDC shall comply with the EIS law, shall comply with the Historic Preservation Law, shall comply with the Sunshine Law, shall comply with the Wage and Hour Law, shall comply with the restriction on the sale of ceded lands. No sale of ceded lands. Um, consistent PLDC shall comply with the state law relating to contractors and the PLDC must pay OHA any ceded land revenues as required by the HRS. These things are very important to have uh, not only in the law but in, in your rules and also the fact that the PLDC will not sell any state or county lands, will not sell any state or county lands without the legislature's approval or county approval that's required. So you folks do not have the right, legal right, to just go ahead and sell any state or any public land. I think it's important that the public, um, you know, everyone understands that. We also believe that um, the, the paragraph in the strategic plan relating to IAL uh, might, might need to be revised. The PLDC should have the flexibility to support projects on state IAL lands. The current draft guidelines prohibit development, even agricultural development, on lands eligible for designation as important agricultural lands, or IAL. Um, you know, this has several problems, four problems that we've noted in our testimony. It could prevent worthy public-private partnerships and IAL and agricultural projects on state IAL lands and other agricultural lands. Uh, secondly, such a guideline is unnecessary as the IAL law already requires the Department of Agriculture and DLNR to identify, map, and designate all public lands which should be IAL. The current IAL law requires Department of Agriculture and DLNR to identify, map, and designate all public lands, all public lands which should be important ag lands. That's in the law. And it also requires that the Land Use Commission designate all of those lands that are recommended by Department of Agriculture and DLNR. So uh, the second point is that guideline might be unnecessary. The third uh, point is the vague reference to eligible for designation is vague and ambiguous. We would note that the current law and the existing HRS 205-44.5, HRS 205-44.5, 
which requires uh, Department of Ag and DLNR to designate, identify, map, and designate IAL. It does not use the term eligible. Okay, eligible creates a very vague term, and um, it could also embroil the PLDC in ongoing litigation related to agricultural lands that are, quote, eligible, unquote, uh, for designation as IAL. And lastly, we would respectfully recommend on this point, uh, we would respectfully recommend that this section be revised, in fact, to encourage encourage public pri public private partnerships for agricultural projects which are consistent with the IAL law or which otherwise support the agricultural industry and which support the goals and objectives of the Department of Agriculture. So we feel that the PLDC should be encouraging projects that are recommended by the Department of Agriculture um, for state lands. I got a, a few other comments. The strategic plan and provisions should be consistent with the language of Act 55 in the statute. Are you a testimony? We that, understand that, and we've seen that point of order. there are several changes in the language point of order. Inconsistent. They're inconsistent. Point of order. There's no such thing as point of order. You, oh, were, allowed, you, were, allowed, you were allowed to speak, were allowed to speak, speak, speak here, You were allowed to speak longer, so we're giving him the time. Just, just call it. Just common courtesy. Okay. okay, I'll try to wrap it up. The um, the law the law provides that um, you know certain provisions be applicable to PLDC and the strategic plan changes that language. Any changes to the language could delay the review of projects and cause litigation. Uh, next, we recommend that the PLDC encourage partnerships with all businesses. We would note that the uh, plan, the strategic plan, only refers to small businesses. So that could cause confusion. And lastly, uh, we would recommend that the uh, draft flow chart should be revised and consistent with applicable rules and procedures of other similar state agencies which deal with land use approvals. And we mentioned those, DLNR, LUC, HCDA. Lastly, with respect to um, Chapter 302, just a general comment. Just a general comment, last. How many the, minutes was it? The proposed, Two minutes or three. the proposed PLDC processes and rules to reflect relevance, reasonableness, and appropriate understanding of the development and financing process. And we've attached proposed draft amendments. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Is the last speaker, is that organized? Does anybody else like to testify? Okay. Uh, that's it. The testimony of PLDC. We're in a small room uh, downtown. Okay, this closes the public testimony portion of the hearing. After considering your comments and other uh, testimonies, and it should be decided to go ahead with or without changes, the PLDC will submit the proposed administrative rules to the PLDC board at the board meeting on Wednesday, November 28, 2012, for adoption with recommendations. Should the board decide to adopt the administrative rules, we will send the rules to the Department of the Attorney General for legal review. After the AG's approval, the PLDC will send the rules to the governor for final approval and signature. If above as described, the PLDC will file certified copies with the office of the Lieutenant Governor. Ten days after filing, the administrative rules will become effective and have the force and effect of law. So on behalf of the uh, Public Land Development Corporation, we thank you uh, for attending. And before I, I adjourn the meeting, uh, I'm wondering if uh, Chair Adler had anything you'd like to add? Just a, there's a certain amount of decorum, and we allowed other people to go over, and I, I think that was pretty rude of me. We allowed other people to go over. You made your point, it's done. <coughs> Thank you for that comment and uh, very, a point very well taken. I did say at the beginning, if, if you know, those of you who were here, that we'd uh, take the testimony uh, for everyone and play it by ear. Some were longer than others. Uh, we understand the sensitivity, but nevertheless, uh, we thank you all for coming.
the public hearing is adjourned. Time now is 2.20, say 2.20. And here we go. Thanks for staying with us all this time. This will be available on YouTube in two parts. Of course, it was filmed by uh, Olelo. Here they are. Thanks, guys. <coughs> the uh, the uh, <coughs> This is the all-seeing eye. <laughs> Let's see that side. Protect the land from development and cooperation. Uh, they hold it in a small room, so to control the crowd, basically. And this is saying, sir, you had your time. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad you brought this sign. I don't know why more you people don't bring signs. Yeah. Sign. Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Very good. Yeah, right. I, I checked with a few local five guys first to make sure. Public it just started with, Very with this actually. I wanted to define it because actually until last night I wasn't even sure what it was. Ah, okay. So. <clears throat> State agency tasked to, uh, to sign contracts with foreign businesses to pave over what remains of the island for tourism without regard to public input. Yeah, exactly. That's They're very short in public input or anything like that. They're he, dealing he thinks with his own guy for almost. Yeah. 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 Any anything you want to say? This is a travesty. It's not democracy. I'm really sick, so you probably shouldn't hear me. <laughs> okay. The germs might go <laughs> to the live stream. I don't. I've never actually heard of a govern, governing entity of any kind establishing a corporation. I don't know how that's okay. Well, as they, as uh, someone pointed out uh, during one of the protests that uh, Great Britain formed the East India Corporation to rule, to rule uh, India. India was actually ruled not by a governmental body, but a right. private oh corporation. Yeah. Yeah. So that they could grow tea so that all of the English people could be sated. Because it's really important that the English have their tea. Right, right, right. 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 And they don't grow any there. Yeah, yeah. You can't really <laughs> grow shit in England. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Like potatoes. So this is the same model. And uh, actually, the, if you look up the flag of Hawaii, it's very similar to the flag of the East India Corporation. It has the Union Jack in one uh, corner and red, red, red and white stripes. Are the open. red coats coming? So are the, and thank you, Michael Tata, for your um, testimony. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go home and I'm going to chop up everybody's testimony into individuals so that for their own individual scrapbook and, and news uh, dissemination. You can put video in a scrapbook. So I'm